Hello there, peeps. How you doing? It's your least favorite content creator, Waifu Belector, the only fair human on earth. And today we're gonna keep the ball rolling with another video focusing on Xbox and Microsoft. In my last video, we talked about the unfortunate shutting down of both Arcane Austin and Tango Gameworks. However, this time I want to look at things that have not yet happened and lock in on a different Xbox studio and game. I'm talking about Ninja Theory and their upcoming game Hellblade 2. So before we get into it, please remember to like and subscribe if you end up enjoying. I appreciate it. But okay, let's talk about it. So if you didn't know, Ninja Theory has been a part of Xbox Game Studios since 2018 after they developed Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice the year before. And since then, they haven't done much. They did a couple of VR games which naturally are extremely niche endeavors. VR is far from the de facto way to play games. It's not even a must have additional way, honestly. But after a couple of VR games, Ninja Theory also released Bleeding Edge in 2020. A pretty fun and creative hero shooter that mixed shooting with the melee combat that Ninja Theory is more known for. Unsurprisingly, however, this game completely failed to set the world on fire and was shut down only 10 months after launch. Not even a full fucking year. Unsurprising as this game's failure and shutdown was though, I can say I think it was better than its short run suggests. I played it a decent amount back in 2020 and I thought it was pretty cool personally. <laughs> Although I knew it wasn't going to survive just based on the climate of games. Anyway, beyond Bleeding Edge in 2020, Ninja Theory only has the sequel to Hellblade which is right around the corner here in 2024. And in the past I've shared concern for Hellblade and its quality, but now that concern has evolved. I'm now concerned not only for the game's quality, but for the game's sales performance and concerned for Ninja Theory as the developer. Because Xbox is not in a friendly position for studios of Ninja Theory size. I mean, the whole games industry is currently in a fucked up, unforgiving position, which is why there are so many layoffs and downsizes, mostly due to poor executive decision making, I might add, but for some some reason it always falls on the devs which sucks but yeah xbox clearly being part of the gaming industry is also in this position and also has the position compounded with problems all their own xbox has been struggling to compete with the likes of PlayStation and Nintendo, or carve out a niche or a steady foothold in any way. They struggled so much that they now just flat out say that those guys aren't our competition, <laughs> which, you know, is true for the wider company at large. If you're Microsoft and you're raking in trillions of dollars a year, Yes, that's true, but it's not true for the smaller subsidiary section that is Xbox. If you're Xbox, unfortunately those PlayStation guys are certainly your competition. But yeah, Xbox has taken gambles on acquisitions in hopes of gaining more exclusives. They've gambled on Xbox Game Pass, which is a gamble that is very much still in motion. And these gambles, these plans, just don't seem to be paying off in meaningful positive ways. So the Xbox cuts and downsizes have the potential to get even more harsh. With every move they make, it seems that they have less and less room for failure or even even mild success? It looks as though we're coming up on an Xbox period where if you're not generating overwhelming profitability or substantial Game Pass subscribers, then you will be put on the chopping block. Making the only studios exempt from this the ones with big cash cow IPs. You know who doesn't have a big cash cow IP? Ninja Theory. And I think Xbox and Microsoft, they've got the cleaver out and they're ready to cut these motherfuckers off if things go less than stellar. And unfortunately, I think the odds are all really stacked against Ninja Theory here. Xbox is looking at them like, hey, you did some VR games that didn't really make us too much money. 
then you did Bleeding Edge and it flopped, deliver with the sequel to the game that made us acquire you in the first place, or else. And if that's the case, it's a really shit position to be in, especially when you consider the evidence and air around Hellblade 2. We know that Hellblade 2 has been in development since at least 2019. That's before Bleeding Edge came out. And since then, Hellblade 2 has received several delays and is only now finally releasing five years later. That's perfectly fine. Games have taken longer to come out and still been good. But then we get confirmation that the game is only seven to eight hours long, about the same length as the first game, except that game came out only three years after its announcement. So how does Hellblade 2, with additional backing from Xbox that the first game didn't have, take significantly longer for a game of similar length? Perhaps that's a bad omen. Or, if we're lucky, when we actually play Hellblade 2, it'll become obvious what took so long. But I honestly have my doubts about that. From what we've been shown, Hellblade 2 sort of appears to be more of the same, albeit with better graphics, of course. It's been an entire console generation after all. And that's the thing, Ninja Theory just refuses to show much of this game. And the game probably has like five fucking trailers, but they're all cinematic or cut in such a way that you can't really make heads or tails of its gameplay aside from what just looks like the first game. And this hiding of the game can mean one of two things. Either they don't want to spoil the true surprises and goodies of the game, or there simply isn't a ton to show. And I unfortunately fear the latter to be more likely. The bad signs don't really stop there either though. Something I've noticed as we quickly approach the release to Hellblade 2 on May 21st is that it's relatively quiet. There isn't a lot of chatter about this game. It feels like a lot of people don't even know it's coming out. And even more worryingly, it seems like Xbox doesn't care. The campaign for Hellblade 2 seems non-existent. I'm not sure if they don't plan to advertise it much until release or what, but it feels like Xbox doesn't care to tell people about this game. Almost like they've already chalked it up as an L. And if that's true, then they've probably also already decided that they're gonna cut Ninja Theory. So then it might be likely that the only thing that could stop a Ninja Theory shutdown is if Hellblade 2 just naturally turned into a surprising absolute banger of a hit game. And I do mean a fucking hit because we saw Hi-Fi Rush sell good or okay or whatever with high critical acclaim, but that didn't matter. It seems that right now with Xbox, you're either a hit or you're a failure. But who knows, it might even be possible that Ninja Theory can do what Toys for Bob did and buy themselves out. Hell, maybe. They already have. And that's why neither Xbox or Ninja Theory seems interested in promoting this game too much because Hellblade 2 is their last contractual hurrah. And after that, Xbox won't have to pay them and they'll get to work on something they're passionate about without being under the thumb of Microsoft. But of course, that's all pure speculation on my part. What seems clear enough is that things are iffy for Hellblade 2, and the future of Ninja Theory may very well hang in the balance. I can't be 100% of anything though, what do you guys think? Let me know, and you know, thanks a lot if you've made it this far and listened to some guy who likes video games talk this much. Let me know if you're planning on getting Hellblade 2, it's gonna sell for $50 and it releases on May 21st, or if you have Game Pass already, you can just jump right in on release day at no extra charge. I'm definitely gonna play it, clearly I'm worried, but we'll see if those worries are warranted. But for now, let me know if you're gonna play it and what you think about all of this, if anything. That's all from me though, I think. Thanks for watching. Again, if you enjoyed, I'd really appreciate a like on the video. You can also subscribe for more video game related rambling. Thanks in advance, and until next time, I am Waifu Blector. I am just a normal guy. I like hentai, and now I'm sad about Bleeding Edge's failure all over again. Goodbye.